type one errors um, and this video is going to look at a, the, your type one error in a continuous distribution so basically looking at your normal distribution it is different for a discrete distribution d distribution and I have made a separate video for that uh, in the same playlist okay so the idea behind a type one error which is common across both continuous and discrete distributions is how it is it is when it occurs when you reject your null hypothesis even though your null hypothesis was correct so let's say your null hypothesis was something about how the mean uh, of the height of a particular sample of plants was let's say three centimeters and your alternative hypothesis was that the mean has decreased. If you say, if you deduce that the mean has decreased, that is you accept the alternative hypothesis, and if you're accepting the alternative hypothesis, you obviously reject the null hypothesis. Uh, so if you say, if you reject the null hypothesis, if you say that the mean has decreased, even though it hasn't, then you're committing a type one error. Um, the question, they can only ask two types of questions with this. The first is just to explain what is meant by a type one error in context. So in the example I just gave where uh, H naught was that the mean is let's say three centimeters and the alternative hypothesis where the, was, is where the mean is less than three centimeters. Um, in this particular context, you wouldn't simply say reject H naught even though H naught is true. You'd say something along the lines of how you would deduce that uh, the mean has decreased, thereby rejecting H naught and accepting H1. However, the, in reality, the, the mean was still the same, the mean height of the plants or the mean, uh, let's say, students who take math, whatever it is. So you have to give it in context. That's very important, the context bit. The second type of question they can ask, and the more common one, is basically the probability of committing a type one error. And this is extremely easy uh, in the case of a type one error because this is simply equals to your significance level. What is your significance level? Your significance level basically indicates the probability of your critical region. So for example, in this case, for this particular case, if I was like, let's do this at a 5% significance level, it is a lower tail test, a one-sided test. So the probability of this, this area, which is your critical region or your rejection region, whatever you want to call it, is 0 0.05. You will only reject H0, your null hypothesis, when it falls in the critical region. And hence, your probability of rejecting H0 uh, is itself, uh, just by definition, uh, your, the probability of it falling in the critical region and hence getting rejected. It can only get rejected if it falls in the critical region. So the probability would basically just be the probability of your um, critical region, um, which is basically your significance level. So in this particular case, the probability of you making a type, excuse the handwriting, the, a type one error would be 0 0.05, case closed, literally as simple as that. And that's it for con a continuous distribution. It is different for a discrete distribution. Uh, there's a separate video for that.